They call it Zoom fatigue. One of us thinks it's BS. The other buys it. Welcome to the Brewman's podcast. Hope you are doing fantastic amidst lockdowns wherever you are as we want to get back to some sort of normalcy. But nonetheless, division is thriving. But we're still here trying to make the most out of life, celebrating it one beer at a time. What do you got, Mike Russell, today? It's old school today. And I mean way old school. I was going to get into shoots, and I think you got into shoots as well. I, I was going to get into shoots, uh, and, uh, and then I saw this beauty. 25 ounces of history, Rob Hunter. 25 ounces of our past right here. The green bottle, or in this case, can, of Rolling Rock. That is right. Wow. Rolling Rock Extra Pale. Not just a pale ale. It's an extra pale. It says right here on the can, premium beer. So you know it's good. That's right. Going way back to the day where all we drank was Rolling Rock because we thought that's what craft beer was. This thing is huge. I need a spotter for this thing. Jeez. It's 25 ounces. It's massive. It is old school. It's one extra, one extra ounce for free. One extra ounce. Free. One, buy 24, get one free. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, oh, my gosh. Is it bad or... No, it's just going right back. It's like memory Man. lane. That's crazy. This like, this like, like, like this just happened. Like when I drank this, it was like it was like some girl passed me with a perfume that my old high school girl, like college girlfriend, wore or something like that. So, whoa, just took you right back. The green bottle, right back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna back. Go ahead, Deschutes. Yeah. By the way, his name is Mike Russell. My name is Rob Hunter. I have Deschutes's. Luna Joe Cold Brew Coffee Lager. Let me show you on the video screen. Cold right brew, by the way, we're putting it up on YouTube as well for you. So if you prefer the video method, you get to see our mugs and our selection of beers and our selection of T-shirts that we wear while recording the podcast. It's true. Nice. I don't have a bottle top. Nope. Just yeah, got a can. You got a can, and it's a big can. So let's talk about this. Zoom fatigue. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've all kind of had some kind of form of Zoom meeting, I assume, whether it's at work or whether it's Microsoft Teams or FaceTime, or you're doing a lot more video chat than we ever have in the history of mankind. But now there's a new term for it. It is being called Zoom fatigue, Mike Russell. And you and I had a little difference of opinion on this one. Well, right. I, I believe it. it's a thing because if you're staring at a screen and you have seven people that you normally have in-person meetings with, and you are sitting in the same chair you've been in all day doing Zoom meetings, and you're staring at the same screen, and you're fighting through all of this because most likely you're not even wearing pants. So your mind is not into it. You just got the whole torso up view, and <laughs> you're just you're in a different mindset, but then you're in work mode, but you can't really react to people in the same way you do in person. So it's fatiguing. It is actually draining. It's like you and I doing a five hour show about a shooting that just happened. And we have to go just keep talking about it and keep talking about it, keep talking about it. When we're done with that, we're taxed. We're fatigued. I think the same thing happens in Zoom meetings. See, I just think it's something the internet made up so we can complain about something. Like, oh no, look, now we have fatigue from being in Zoom meetings. Why don't we just adopt Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's mentality just what? not to work and get checks from the government. Oh, no, not what <laughs> I'm saying because, but I do, I do see where you're going with that though. It's like, do you suffer from Zoom fatigue? Yeah. Try Zoom away from whatever pharmaceutical company, right? I mean, it's going to be, you know, side Thank effects you. include, yeah, a big butt and uh, weighing 25 pounds more and all that. Yeah, it, it is, it, but it is a thing though. I, I oh, Sure, the term is made up. I'll agree with that. It's a Zoom fatigue thing. It's something, but but the reason why it is a term that is hitting uh, the the lexicon of our nation is because it's relatable, because it makes sense. It's not like RLS, rest, restless leg syndrome, where you're thinking, yeah, my legs do hurt. Yeah, my legs are tired at the end of the day. I should probably take a drug for that. No, we're all doing this right now. We're all on these stream yards, uh, Zoom and Microsoft Teams. We're all on this. We're all going through the same stuff, and it's different. It's different for a lot of people. Rob and I are used to being on camera, and that's okay. That's easy for us to do this kind of thing. It's not very hard for us. Most, and I mean most, of the nation is not used to this garbage at all. And on top of that, you're sitting and thinking of, in the Zoom meeting, how long am I going to have to keep doing Zoom meetings? 
And just that is almost emotionally taxing because you think, am I stuck here? Is this my new job? Is this what I'm going to be doing now? Is this my career? Is this what I went to Dartmouth for? I'm going to sit here in my living room in my pajamas and, and stare at a computer screen. This isn't what I signed up for. Well, and that's it. So there's no doubt it's a change. And, you know, we're, we're used to having human interaction. And that's what's been most missing from my, my life. I mean, I think I've hung out in person in the last six weeks with my neighbors, my friend Rob. I didn't even know the last time I saw you, Mike Russell, in person. We work together every single day. We stare at each other through a video screen, but we haven't sat down. We had a, an incident at home a couple of weeks back where we both had to rush into the station because the station was having some internet problems. Obviously, that's how we're connecting to work to do our afternoon radio show here in Phoenix. So that being said, I haven't seen you in person since that. And that was kind of a rush in, rush home. Okay, good. See you later. That was the fun three hours. So that's my, my, my fatigue is not actually seeing people because that's weird. So I kind of been going to the speakeasy gym that's been opening up and doing some workouts. And that's but it's the there's only booze at the gym. Hold on, Robert. Don't 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 rush by that one, dude. You said it's a speakeasy gym. Tell me. Well, it's, there's no booze in it, but it's like you got to sneak in the door and you got to look for oh, the light yeah, underground. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not supposed to be open, but the guy obviously needs to keep his business afloat because he's got to pay the rent. He's got to pay right. his mortgage, so sure. he's keeping open, and some members are coming in. And that's the only sense of normalcy I have. So I go in there and I work out and I'm like around other people and I'm like, ooh, this is fun. So I understand that the Zoom fatigue really should be that. The fatigue is, yes, we have changed our complete way of life out of the blue. There was no warm up. There was no stretching beforehand. It was just like, let's go run this race as fast as possible. So it's an adjustment. I just don't like that we're already labeling it as defeatist. Like, oh, we have Zoom fatigue. Okay, if we do, let's come up with solutions and figure out best ways to do it. Uh, my wife would use the term best practices. You know, the corporate world kind of uses that term. Yes. So everybody's office should have an honest conversation about the number of Zoom Microsoft team meetings going on and figure out how to dial them back if that's possible. I don't think it's going to be one of the things contributing to the downfall in productivity because I don't know if I've ever been busier than when I started working at the house. It, it's it's wild okay. to me. I think we're getting more done working at home and I think we're doing it in less time. But I, I think a good point you brought up, Rob, was the, the ramp up. There was no ramp up. It just hit us. And it was, well, it didn't hit us. It was, it was dropped on us like an anvil and wily e. coyote, right? So it was not a, okay, every Monday people are going to work from home and we're going to have a Zoom meeting. Our normal meeting is going to be on Zoom. And so when you're there on Monday and you're like, oh, this is dragging on. You're like, okay, I'll be in the office and I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. Let's not even talk about it on Zoom right now. I'll talk to you in the office about it tomorrow. And because they say things like that or they would say things like that because they know that the human one-on-one -on -one interaction is a lot easier to deal with emotionally and mentally. So you're not going to have that. You're like, I really want to have this conversation with Rob with the bosses here, but I can't because we got to do this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I see that. I see that becoming taxing. That's why I say I buy into the Zoom fatigue. Well, I, and I, just, see, that's, I, don't, I just don't like the term is really what I'm getting at. I understand this. Okay. Changing adaptation i just don't like how we have to label everything by some uh, i don't know psychological definition of it so that we can be treated well oh so we find a, a way to go oh that's what i'm suffering from i'm suffering from zoom fatigue that's why i'm tuned out today because i have this thing that i read about on some internet website that came up with a clever headline that labeled this because that's all internet headline writers want to do they want to come up with the next term that everybody uses so okay. that we all like rally around that like a campfire. Yeah. I'll, by the way, social distancing is taken. Someone came up with that. Brilliant. Wish they would have patented it. Wish they would have copyrighted that thing because, man, that's it. We're, we've got social distancing labeled. But I, I do understand what you're saying, but it does not take away from the fact that it could be used for good. And I'm sorry, I said take away from the fact. I would just say it takes away from the idea that it could be used for good in you know what? The Zoom fatigue thing is real to me. So I'm going to make some changes outside of my Zoom meeting. So I am taking a walk around the block a couple of times. I'm just like getting back into it. I'm going to get myself on a schedule. So this isn't so taxing. I have light at the end of the tunnel. They can make changes in their new work life that they probably hate and thought they would love. And so I think that putting a label on it helps identify it, helps you accept that it's going on and helps you make changes. 
Well, and that's it, right? And that's the, the change is the key part because to have fortitude, it requires you to suck it up, buttercup, for lack of a better term. Figure out a way forward. Don't use yeah. it as an excuse. So whatever the label of it actually is, if you feel that that is true, whether it's called Zoom fatigue or I just hate Zoom meetings or I hate working from home, well, that's the option right now. So you have to figure out a way to deal with it, a way to kind of move on, a way to say, okay, like Mike said, my solution is walk around the block. My solution is go outside for five minutes. My solution, I don't know, try not to have too many beers in the middle of work day when no one's looking. You're like, is anybody looking? Do I got some whiskey? How about we invent a podcast where we can drink beer? Yeah, okay, let's do that. Yes. Yes. But for me, I'm having a struggle because, you know, doing a talk show on the afternoon requires a lot of energy, a lot of thought, a lot of whatever. So – it's kind of lingers in the house. Like when I'm done, I'm like, there's the studio, which is in the middle of my house. And it's weird when you walk by after you're done working, because there's the microphone, there's all the equipment that connects me to the radio station. There's all the stuff that I just did my notes. And I'm like, Ugh. there's no separation from the office. So that's what I'm ch- having challenges with. That's why I kind of moved to the dining room. Cause I was literally in the living room. And I was like, I can't even sit in the living room now. Because I feel like I'm at work. So at least I can push it aside by putting all the equipment on the dining room table. Last weekend, I didn't even come in here. This is, our, this is actually my wife's office turned into my studio. But I walked by it in the front door and in the hallway and stuff. And I, and I just I said, I'm, well, I'm closing that door. I'm not going back in there for at least two days. And then yeah. I'm, I'm going to reset on Monday. But, and that's never. I would always think about even going into the station. Oh, I got it going on Saturday. Ain't no thing. All right, cool. I'll go to the station on Saturday. It's, it's not a big deal. Coming into here on Saturday was a big deal. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a different, different way, and that's why. But I've recognized it, and now I make now I'm making changes. Make changes in my schedule. I do prep outside of here. I do this and that. But once I had to identify it, and I identified it, and I'm not going to call it um, wife's former office fatigue, <laughs> got something. And then I'm I'm going to and I'm going to make changes. So I think with Zoom fatigue, I think that people, even bosses. And employers, too, can look at Zoom fatigue and or look at that term and go, hmm, you know what? You know what? Yeah, we need to think about different ways of doing things or I need to encourage them when I am on a Zoom meeting with them. Hey, guys, for about five minutes, get up and walk around a little bit. We got about an hour left, so I need you guys to be fresh. Let's kick this back on in 10 minutes or something like that. You know what I mean? Like if they see it, they can identify it. Well, that and that's huge. And again, it comes down to what are you doing about it? And there always needs to be a solution. So. This has been a big problem with politicians, actually, throughout this COVID-19. I'll use Bill de Blasio as an example, New York City mayor. And I don't want to get too political. We do that four days, uh, five days a week, four to seven on 550 KFY. He does. And and here's why. It's very simple. (laughs) Why? Because all he does is complain about things. He doesn't offer any solutions. He blames Trump. He blames Trump. He blames Trump. Well, you're the governor of a city that has more residents in it than most states. In fact, more people live in New York City than live in Arizona. More people live in New York City than live in Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and uh, probably North and South Dakota combined. Yeah. So you are essentially a governor, and you have a lot of power in that office, and all you're doing is complaining. You're not solving any problems. You're not fixing any problems. You're just bitching, and that's why he's not a good leader. Or not even a leader. He's not even a leader. Forget about good. He's not even a bad leader. He's not even a leader. He's not even, he's not even on the board. So, but yeah, I, no, I, I agree with that. But it's all different. Here we are. We're in a different kind of world. We get to drink beer, though. And I found an old beer. Look at this thing, man. Look, this is intimidating. You found this on YouTube or a Facebook page. Look at this thing. You're intimidated by it. I know you are. This thing's gigantic. I'm intimidated by this thing. But we get to have old old friends come back. How about that? Maybe this is why I got that beer. And I'm, I'm not don't like, stay with me here. Maybe that's why I went to Rolling Rock. It's because things are so weird and so crazy that I wanted to like go home to the old comfort beer, back in the day beer, where I thought I was a cool kid because I was drinking Rolling Rock and I thought it was craft beer. So going back to that and that taste, like that right when I hit that thing, I was like, whoa, and that felt good. That broke up my day. That you know my day's been going like hell since well not like hell but it's been going like crazy since four thirty a.m. Mm-hmm. So now I will just get to come home have a little beer. It's all good. Yeah, and that's we do need to that little sense of normalcy. In it's not going to be normal right away because you still don't know who's ready to do what. So of your friends in your social circle, 
who is going to be going to a restaurant with you? Not everybody's going to go. So let's say you have a social, let's say you have 10 people you hang out with regularly. Six of those 10 may not want to go to a restaurant until August. So you're like, okay, can I go over their house? They can let me come over their house. Can I invite them over to my house? We're still kind of unsure about who's ready to do what yet. And that's a big part about what's next. I'm ready to go. I'm tired of this nonsense. I wasn't sure I was ready to go to a concert, but at this point I'm like, I don't care. I just want more sense of what we called normal prior to March, you know, where no one worried about things. So yeah, there's a bar in Phoenix that has a 90s hip hop and R&B night every now and again. And as COVID-19 was ramping, it was early March. I don't know if it was the first, I think it was like March 3rd or something like that. So I went with our buddy Pablo. That was the last sort of sense of normalcy that I had. And now I'm like, last week I was like, I don't know if I'd go back. If they held one tonight, I would go. Cause I'm like, whatever, I'm gonna wash my damn hands. I'm gonna get some beers. I didn't even care. I just need to get out of the house to have something other than yeah. I wake up. Oh, look, there's work. I work more at home than I do in the office. And then I right. hang out and after work, I hang out and I do more work and then I go to bed and I get up and I do it again. I get up, I do it again. I'm, I'm with you 100%. I want to go. And you know what that is? That's working home fatigue. That's getting locked down fatigue. That's being in jail fatigue. I feel like I'm in a, the prison of suckery right now. And it's, <laughs> it's terrible. I love my family. I love being around my family. But I don't like living with my family 24-7. It's driving me batty. And it's not because <laughs> I don't love them. It's because I love getting out and working and providing for them and doing what my DNA tells me to do. And that's get out there and provide. That's what I do. And doing it here. It's not the same thing. This is life fatigue. This is COVID fatigue. I don't mind them calling it Zoom meeting fatigue. Well, I just don't want to get in this habit where we create a name for everything and that becomes like a phase word. And then we're like, okay, great. It just gives us an excuse to, 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 to misbehave or whatever. Because here's what's happened. We've taken all of the steps of human evolution, essentially, and, and made us stay at home. So all of the advancements in human history we're just not doing right now. We're basically in caveman mentality at the moment. It's yes. like, we have a camp, we stay near the camp because we don't know what's out there in the forest. We're like, I don't know what's out there. I am staying here. So I'm gonna stay here, protect, and I'll go out and I'll gather food and I'll hunt and I'll bring it back to the camp. So that's basically what we're doing right now. We're going to hunter and gather, not in the literal sense, at least not all of us. Mike Russell is out there doing that. But we're going to Costco to hunt and gather. We're going to Safeway to hunt and gather, wherever you totally okay. came from. And we come home. Exactly. So we've taken out the fact that we invented the car as human beings. And we're like, ooh, we get to travel. Not really. Can't go anywhere. Nothing open. So you can't go to, you can't even for us. For me, driving a Sedona takes like an hour and a half to two hours. I'm like, I was talking to Amy about it. She's like, you can still go. I'm like, and do what? Sit around in Sedona? Yeah. Might as well sit around in my house. And she's like, yeah, but you can go hike. I'm like, I can hike here. She's like, yeah, but you can go camp. And I'm like, I don't want to go camp right now. No, it's not in the mood. Although maybe I should because I'm not in the mood. Maybe I should just go put the tent up, take a couple nights, sleep in the tent, and, you know, wake up and do things. Because that's – but it's still – it's still like old school mentality. I can't get on a plane. I'm, where am I going to go? Even if I go there, what's open? So I'm hunkered down and I'm not a hunkered down person. We don't live hunkered down lives for the most part because we drive to work, we drive home, we drive to Sedona, we drive to New Hampshire, whatever. Right, but that's taxi. That is, that's fatiguing. That wears you down, not being able to do those things. Exactly. That's what this is, and it's, I, I, but I think it's okay to say it. I know it's, it's kind of a catchy little thing to say. And they took a, they took a name brand and attached it to it instead of a Microsoft because Microsoft meeting fatigue sounds stupid. So <laughs> fatigue sounded cool. And I, I understand where you're coming from on it, but I think we do agree that, that yeah, that, that this kind of lifestyle, and that is a big part of our working lifestyle now, Zoom meetings and Microsoft team meetings, things like that. It is a, th there is a fatigue element to that because it just doesn't seem to go away and we don't know when it's going to go away. We don't know if it'll right. ever go away. And that is mentally and emotionally taxing. I would say fatiguing. So take this. See, I would say it's worse than fatiguing because of, of where I'm going to go. You have two kids and I'm going to try to picture myself as a kid. Probably growing up, your kids had a favorite toy, a favorite something, a blanket. 
Something that they loved, they took everywhere. We all did at some point. Imagine that got taken away from you right when you loved it the most and you needed it the most. And that blanket's gone, that toy's gone. Nowhere to be found ever again. Or it's somewhere, and you can get it back. I'm just not gonna tell you when. And to a kid, a day is a long time. To us, a day is a day. We're in our 40s, we've lived a lot of days. But if you're two years old, you've only lived 700 days so far. So every one is amazingly long. So if you have to think about, if you can even rationalize at that point, it might be three months before you get your toy back. Three months? How long is three months? Okay, 90 days. Now, I've only been alive. That's like 10% of my life, more than that. Oh, yeah. I don't have this toy. So it's, it's much more than that. So it could go into the actual, maybe depression stage, maybe anxiety phase, something actually real if this lasts too long because all of our toys – got snatched away from us and they're there somewhere we just can't find them and we don't know when we're going to be able to use those toys again I'm as much better than zoom fatigue okay okay but zoom fatigue at least i get a slice a slice of that pie what you just said if that if that is a pie you know i like to talk about the pies that zoom fatigue zoom is a part of that pie as adults as working adults in this uh, in this age right now digital virtual meetings fatiguing but fatiguing and i don't like them or fatiguing and i'm staring at a computer screen emotionally just like draining that to me is fatigue just like i don't want to get up off the couch right now that's fatigue that means i could probably go uh do 20 minutes on my rowing machine not physical, like I'm physically fatigued. Like I just, I don't even have what it takes to get up right now. I'm just, I just want to sit here and stare at Star Wars movies. That's yeah. fatigue. See, I don't have that because I think all meetings are like that. In-person meetings, Zoom meetings. I don't see a difference between the two because there's still meetings, and most of what's in those meetings, fifty percent of the content is. Not but I've watched you in meetings, though. But I've watched you in meetings. I've watched you walk around. I watch you, you know, bounce a, a, a cricket ball or whatever the hell that thing, a lacrosse ball. I've seen you, you know, on your phone, things like that. You get to move around and do that. You don't get to do that in Zoom meetings. So that's why I'm saying that's okay. Turn the camera off. I'll be back in a second. I got a cough. I got to yeah, tell you, boss. Yeah, tell Linda Little you to do that. Tell tell President Lady you to do that. No, she there was eighty two ah, people in that call. They weren't looking at me. Yeah, if it's that, if well, it's a, I dropped the swear right when I turned it on. Cause I was waiting for it to load and I said the F word apparently. And it went over, it wasn't even on camera yet. And apparently dropped an F bomb in front of everybody. <laughs> like all the big leaders and I'm like, awesome. Good job, Rob. Great. Cool. Nice. So you, got, you, know, you, know, you know what Rob Hunter said? You know what Rob Hunter said? Right when he came in and did that, he goes, he goes, I oh, am yeah, Mike Russell tuning in. Yeah, here I am. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's right, cool. Mike so it's it's it. Russell. Yeah. <laughs> I like to drop the F-bombs when I'm on a Zoom meeting. I call it Zoom yeah. Tourette's. Exactly. See? Zoom That's Tourette's. Right. Oh, we can do this, buddy. We can we can make this happen. We can just blame everything on Zoom. Yeah. I can yeah. get behind why that. You, why did you have an affair? I was Zoom cheating. Yeah, Zoom. It was because of my Zoom cheating. You know, oh, Ashley Madison, by the way, is like bumping in, in uh, stuff, right? In uh, signups right now. Not kidding. Who's going out? Spread the content. They're gonna have little, they're gonna have little virtual little affairs, little like what's up, you know, show pictures of your, you know, naughty bits and whatnot. Yeah, well, I'm not just kidding. Google it. Just Google it. It's free. I know, and it doesn't well, get you the I junk. Can. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <Doesn't get laughs> you the I want that emotional connection. I need. No, you don't. No, you nope. don't. Men, mm -hmm. you know you don't. Please. And you don't want the COVID either. Mm -mm. No, Careful. you get the bad COVID. You get the other V. Exactly. <laughs> <Don't do it. laughs> that's, that's a bunch of nonsense. I'm going to do a little bit of 25 ounce curls right here. So, oh. Yeah, there you go. You all, baby. Yeah. You yeah, all. Yeah, baby. Here we go. Bottom line is, I just, I'm ready. Like, I'm I, I'm not equipped for this. This I, Life has been too good to go backwards to me, and that's what I'm struggling yeah. with. And that is where I'm like, oh. Like, I'm, I, don't, I haven't filled up my gas tank in my car for all five, maybe six weeks. I still have a hundred miles left before I run out of gas. And I've been in the car. What? Getting five days of the gallon right now. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I feel that it was still like $3 a gallon. It's now in Phoenix. I saw 209 as we're recording this. 
Oh my gosh. So, uh, you know, the grocery stores give you points for fuel points and stuff like that. Safeway here in Arizona. And so I had Safeway points at six of them. So I was giving it 60 cents off a gallon, right? They expired. Yeah. I went in, I went in, I went in yesterday and I, I spilled the receipt. I'm like, zero. What do you mean zero? I just had six. They go, yeah, they expired at the end of the month. You have to use them at the month. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't use that much. And I, yeah. I had no reason I to build my thing. Shirts. <laughs> Get you one way, not the other way. No, That's all. We're going to get back to normal, I think, at some point. Maybe. How's your beer? Your old school it's beer. Good. <laughs> Bold face <laughs> lie. I'm getting fatigued on your lies, bro. Look at this. Rolling Rock was it. This is what I drank. This was craft beer. This was it because it came in the green bottles. It was fabulous. It was fantastic. And I had this great idea because Rob was the same way. And I quickly went to Fat Tire back in the day, but Rob was the same way. Stuck with some Rolling Rock. Lady Brewman's had to get him off the rock. And so, did she talk you off the rock? See what he did there. She and did. so, uh, when I saw this can, I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun podcast beer. 25 ounces of just going back. Uh, about three sips. And then I was good. I was like, okay, not back anymore. I'm just sitting here drinking crappy beer in my COVID-19 broadcast bunker. And um, I'm muscling through it. I'm muscling through it. It's um, it's okay. I like that. Nostalgia lasts three sips, essentially. That's all you need. If you want some nostalgia, take three sips of some of the beer that you used to like. If it's Coors, oh. High Life, whatever. Mm -hmm. Take three sips. You're good to go because then you're automatic. You're good. See, you know what? You know what you did? You know what you did? You did exactly what I explained in beer form. So you're like, look, since I'm stuck at home, since I'm basically a caveman, I'm going to go back to when I just started to be free, when it came to getting outside and doing my own thing. That's the beer I was drinking. Let's see where you're going. You're going back to that, and then you miss the world that's out there now. Because when we were 19 years old, Rolling Rock was like everywhere. We didn't know about crap beer because there wasn't that many of them. Then you start experiencing them, and you don't want to go back. Maybe for a sip or two. So the, 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 the parallel is with COVID-19, Maybe it was cool to work from home for a little bit. It's like, I was cool. Get to be around the kids. Get to be around the wife, the husband. You're like, this is cool. And now you're like, okay, uh, three sips later. And now I'm 25 ounces into the beer. And there's another one staring at me in the face because I don't know when this is going to end. Whereas I don't want to give up the craft, in other words. Right. So, no, I, I agree with you. But this is, if you ever want to get the vibe, if you get the Mike Russell vibe where you're in the store and you're like, oh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I want to take it out. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Get the 12-ounce can and shotgun it like you used to. Take the screwdriver and knife and just go and just take it straight to the head. And it'll be a wonderful, nostalgic time for you. And then it'll be over. And it'll be like, wow, that was cool. Not Oh, I need another one. Or 20 of 25 ounces left at the, the yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i think i made the better choice so give it a score give the rolling rock a score so we obviously rate and review beers for you old school rolling rock at least not in the green bottle because the green bottle probably half of the rolling rocks in the green bottles we drank was funky because green bottles bottles aren't great for beer anyways but green bottles in particular the way they trap the sunlight just ruins the beer so we probably drank 50 percent funky beers back in the day it didn't get any better in the can. I'll tell you that much. It did probably was just funky anyway. It's just funky beer that they made. Uh, look, this this is just a four beer. It's it's okay. If I'm on um, if I'm on a river on a kayak trip or something like that, and somebody says, "Hey, I got some rolling rocks," I'd have one. Okay. Do I would would I say, "Hey, you want to get into the beer world? You really want to give this a try? Here, try a rolling rock." I'm going to see what the kids think of it. I want to, I want to see what they, I always give a, my kids a taste of my beer because I want them to not go to college and go beer. And yeah. it worked with my, it, yeah, it worked with my niece, which was fabulous. She she goes to these parties at, at down at U of A at when the, when U of A was open, and, mm -hmm. it, uh, and she goes she goes uncle they have the crappiest beer. It's like terrible. I don't even drink it. I'm like that's what I want to see. That was my goal with you the whole time. So um, so I'm going to see what they think of this. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to like it. We've already trained them well. It's like going backwards in time. Yeah. All right, hit it, kid. What do you got? Juice, the Luna Joe Coffee Brew, uh, the Cold Brew Coffee Lager. This is interesting. It's not bad, but it's not great. So it's somewhere in the middle in that good category. And I'll tell you why. It's 
it tastes too much like coffee, not enough like beer. So it's it's oh, good. Okay. It's got a strong coffee taste to it, but it almost feels like when you wake up in the morning, if you drink iced coffee or if you have cold brew and you put the cold brew in the fridge with only a little bit of beer flavor to it. So because it tastes more like coffee than beer, I'm going to give it an okay school. I'm going to give it as I'm going to give it a seven because I would encourage people to try it. And okay. See what they think because it's not bad. I this this is not this is something I would drink like one of and be like, all right, good, I'm good, I'm good. I don't want two, I don't want four, I want one. It'd be a good beer to have at brunch, but and if you really like coffee, but it's not much of a beer beer. Okay, yeah, that fair enough. So it doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't have the balance. I mean, it's the nutshell, and it just doesn't have the balance it needs for a coffee beer. Yes, like the the, the coffee outweighs the refreshing part of the beer. Whereas the coffee cold made by Hus still has that refreshingness to it. So you're drinking it, you get that coffee flavor, but you still get that nice Kolsch refreshness. Whereas this lager is just not really refreshing. It's just overpowered by the, the coffeeness. You want to trade? Here, you, want, here you can have it. You want, no, mine's not. This, uh, mine's not. It. Mine's nowhere near gone. Uh, when we actually <laughs> end up back at the station, I'll probably still be sipping on this thing uh, weeks from now. Oh. I love it. I don't throw beer away. I don't do it. I'm drinking this thing. It's going. You got a muscle through it, baby. You can do it. We believe in you. Mm -hmm. His name is Mike Russell. My name is Rob Hunter. We are the Brewmans. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you want more information, you can go to brewmans.beer. In fact, we have a t shirt, the No Fake Brews t shirt. You can get yours right. for just 25 bucks. We are also making brewed strong bracelets for you as well. They're hand stamped by Lady Brewmans, my wife. For 25 bucks, you get the shirt and that, and the profits will go to the Arizona Craft Brewers because we still don't know when they are going to open. So this nope. need, this help, obviously needs to continue for them. So that's part of it. So go to Brewman Stop Beer and check us out. Also, we are Russell and Hunter, 4 to 7 p.m. on 550 KFY. We have the Brewman's on the radio as well. That is Saturday nights, 6 to 7 p.m., also on 550 KFY, both of which you can find on the iHeartRadio app. And on Instagram, you can find us. It's so much to do at the underscore yes. Brewman. Give us a like. Give us a holla. We'll be back with you on the podcast real, real soon. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn thing. Yeah. Woo!